found a tube, and the minute I opened it, the smell transported me through time. This one's wife. Political interference. They're trying to silence you. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. One of the most notable features of the so-called culture wars that engulf the planet and are fought largely online is a particular group of individuals who adopt this highly holier-than-thou approach whereby they tell you that you're not allowed to say certain things because it's hate speech. But they are allowed to shout and scream and protest and tell you exactly what they think. You are not allowed to express your opinion because if your opinion is contrary to theirs, it follows it must be hate speech and therefore you must be silenced. That if you express a particular opinion, well, that opinion can only be that of someone who is a bigot and therefore you must be cancelled. These individuals are absolutely incapable of conducting a rational debate based upon evidence. They show a slavish adherence to their echo chamber, whereby they believe that as a consequence of shouting and screaming and stamping their feet, that that gives them some form of right and authority. That you are offending me, therefore I must shut you down. That you have insulted me, what? by virtue of the fact that I've actually offered a view that is contrary to your own. These individuals make a mockery of debate. They are the enemies of free speech. And far from ensuring that others must be shut down, it is those individuals who shouldn't be shut down, no. But rather, we should ensure that as many people are aware that their position is ridiculous, is contrary to the principles of free speech, and that they are trying to shut all of you up. I have no difficulty with any individual advancing a differing opinion from my own, but make it well-founded. Often, people come forward with a contrary view, and it isn't well-founded, and I'll point that out to you, because I rely upon evidence and logic. It has served me throughout the entirety of my life and has made me a successful individual, a powerful individual, an effective individual. The same can be done for you, and adherence to logic and evidence is hugely effective. These individuals that will seek to shut you up, to silence you and shout you down, are invariably governed by emotional responses, whereby, of course, feelings are not facts. This one's wife is guilty of this behaviour also. Narcissists don't like to be criticised. I'm included in that. I don't like to be criticised. It threatens my need for control. However, I'm able to deal with such criticisms in a way which is entirely different from this one's wife. In certain instances, I will simply correct the individual with appropriate knowledge, evidence and facts. In other instances, I recognise that the individual just is spoiling for a reaction from me, invariably an unaware narcissist themselves, or perhaps just an epsilon semi-moron, and I simply laugh to myself and ignore them, because ignoring them sends them into a tail spin. Not giving them the reaction that they crave, not providing them with the validation that they seek, sends them into overdrive, and it is extremely satisfying watching them melt down. In many instances, the brickbats that are thrown at me, I simply regard as a form of compliment that I've managed to cause a reaction from somebody, and I have far more important things to do than lower myself to deal with the little beetles that are scurrying around at the feet of the ultra. This one's wife, however, is unable to respond in such way. Much more evolved narcissists regularly face criticism. Much of it they don't hear because their heads are up in the rarefied atmosphere dealing with other matters. And those criticisms that do come their way, they simply laugh off as a consequence of recognising that they are far more powerful, far more effective, far wealthier than the person that is complaining about them. That more evolved narcissist very much has their finger on the relevant trigger or button to wield power, and they know it. But someone like this one's wife is regularly but hurt by criticism, which her narcissism interprets as hate. 
And therefore, because it threatens her sense of control, she needs to do something about it. Because she's managed to get herself placed upon an international uh, platform, but she's somewhat incapable of maintaining her presence there in an effective way. This means that she has gained prominence, but with that prominence comes scrutiny and accountability, and she can't cope with that, because she lacks the appropriate functions to discharge that in an effective fashion. She doesn't have the appropriate level of cognitive function. She doesn't have the wide-ranging, sophisticated manipulations that are available to her. And instead, she whinges and cries and plays the victim. And she looks to shut people down. And like many of her ilk, what she seeks to do is to try and shut the likes of you down by doing so under the auspices of maintaining that she's doing something good for humanity, that she is a bearer of the truth, whereas we have all seen from a scrutiny of her behaviours that she is in fact a somewhat stranger to the truth with her many revisions of history. We have seen how she has repeatedly held herself out as being an individual who is on the side of good, that is an individual that is on the side of the truth, Similar to those of her grouping, she adopts this holier-than-thou mentality of believing, and she really does believe this, that she is in the right, that she is on some kind of quest to do good for humanity, that she is striking down those that are engaging in misinformation and disinformation, when in actual fact what she's seeking to do is shut up her critics that she's seeking to utilise powers that enable her to say what she wants to say and to prevent anybody else from having a contrary point of view. If you were to put that to her, she would deny it because her narcissism would, of course, activate that first line of the twin lines of the narcissistic defence. But the fact is that she believes that she is entitled to tell you what you should be able to say and what you should be able to think. That is an arrogant, high-handed and grandiose entitled way of approaching things. How do I see this? Well, it's just been reported, and for instance, it's appeared in Tatler, of all places, that this one's wife and Prince Harry wade into politics. The Duke and Duchess launch a campaign in the fight against election misinformation. In other words, we are going to delve into something that we have no experience of, no competence in relation to, and in Harry's case, no real vested interest and we're going to do it on the basis of saying we care about the provision of proper information so long as it's our information and the rest of you well you're involved in misinformation and we're going to shut you up prince harry and this one's wife have launched a campaign in the fight against election misinformation or in other words the fight against those that they disagree with in their latest move in the world of politics the Duchess of Sussex has long faced speculation that she could be entering the political sphere with a couple hiring Obama's PR guru to work on their team and speaking out about the US election back in 2020. During the last cycle four years ago, feminist activist Gloria Steinem previously told Access Hollywood that this one's wife had joined her in calling Americans and asking them to vote. In the interview, Steinem said she came home to vote. The first thing we did, and why she came to see me, was we sat at the dining room table where I am right now when we cold-called voters. Lack of boundary recognition, but also bringing up the past. And now, it seems the couple are once again wading into the political world, as their foundation launches a campaign against election misinformation. A report from Axios detailed how a bipartisan coalition with support from Hollywood power players and Prince Harry and this one's wife's Archwell Foundation, which is rather amusing because it describes it as Hollywood power players and Prince Harry and this one's wife's Archwell Foundation, suggesting that they are not Hollywood power players, titter, 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 is working to prepare US voters for a possible deep fake onslaught during the election year. According to the report, experts are predicting both malicious state actors and domestic political operatives will use deepfake tech and other media manipulation to confuse voters during the US election campaign. Google, Meta and OpenAI are all pledging to combat deceptive AI election content, 
while two adverts have been produced by Jesse Dillon, Bob Dillon's son, to raise awareness for the issue. Meanwhile, oh, and here come our heavy hitters, Prince Harry and this one's wife's organisation, Archwell, is also helping brainstorm new content. Well, given the amount of time it takes this one's wife to generate any form of content, I wouldn't hold your breath. Since stepping down as senior royals and moving across the pond, Harry and this one's wife have not shied away from their involvement in politics. Predictions that the Duchess might even move into politics have swirled before. See parts passing for how she would be absolutely fucking useless and ill-prepared for it. During the 2020 election cycle, they were both particularly active, releasing a video where they urged voters to sign up and reject misinformation, i.e. anybody that disagrees with what we have to say. In the clip, Harry urged voters to reject hate speech, i.e. anything that my wife de determines is not in agreement with what she has to say, and also to reject misinformation online negativity, i.e. you're not allowed to express your opinion if it contradicts what my wife has to say. With this one's wife adding that the presidential race was the most important election of our lifetime and pleaded for Americans to use their vote. In the video, Harry said he was not eligible to vote because he's a thickie, no, since he's a British citizen, and revealed he'd never voted in the UK either, where royals traditionally steer clear of politics. Nothing to do with the fact that the ballot box confused him. In the film, this one's wife said, we're just six weeks out from election day and today is National Voter Registration Day, adding every four years we're told the same thing, that this is the most important election of our lifetime, but this one is, she said, showing her customary ability to make the most important of matters seem the most banal. The article continues by trying to espouse more about the Duchess's political abilities by explaining the Duchess of Sussex also joined the surprise special guests at the United States of Women and When We All Vote online event throwing her support behind a campaign begun by former First Lady Michelle Obama. Speaking with the former senior advisor to Barack Obama, Valerie Jarrett, as well as Glamour US Editors-in-Chief, Samantha Barry and actor Yvette Nicole Brown and DJ Diamond Cuts, she said... I'm really thrilled that you asked me to be a part of this. This is such an exceptional time. As I was thinking about this a little bit, I thought, when I think about voting and why this is so exceptionally important for all of us, I would frame it as, we vote to honour those who came before us and protect those who will come after us, because that's what community is all about. That's specifically what this election is all about. There you are, some more beige word salad. In 2021, this one's wife <clears throat> led a campaign lobbying for compulsory paid leave. Well, she didn't. She wrote a couple of letters and then did fuck all else. But if you want to describe it as such, Tatler, you go ahead. The couple also hired the PR guru responsible for getting former President Barack Obama re-elected for a second term in 2022. Miranda Barbot was reportedly been brought onto Team Sussex in order to overhaul their image. Good luck with that, according to a source speaking to the Mirror at the time. There are shades of the Clinton, the Clintons or even the Kennedys. Don't be fucking ridiculous. What an insult to those political dynasties to compare them even with the hopeless Sussexes. It wouldn't be a shock now if this one's wife went into politics. Indeed, this one's wife, and here we go again, indeed, this one's wife has been involved in activism for much of her life, beginning as a child where she wrote to Procter & Gamble about a sexist advertising campaign, bringing up the past. She also joined protests against the Gulf War, aged 10. During her acting career, she became an outspoken advocate for feminism and was named a UN Women's Advocate for Women's Political Participation and Leadership in 2015. So there you have it. This one's wife and Harry getting involved in a campaign in the fight against election misinformation. Getting involved in something that they don't know anything about, politics, demonstrating that they are so desperate to be taken seriously, but also there's something more sinister about this. This one's wife's repeated involvement in shutting down misinformation is very much something that a middle mid-range narcissist such as her would love. The ability to silence all of her critics doing so under the auspices of believing that she is on the side of truth, justice and goodness. Her activities should be resisted. People should express their right to exercise their freedom of expression and speech on a regular basis, to speak out against those individuals that would censor you, 
whether it's the ridiculous hate speech laws that have been just introduced in Scotland. If you don't know about that, look it up. Have a good old laugh at the preposterousness of it before then settling into the sinister nature of the Orwellian activities that the First Minister of Scotland has unleashed through to the way that this one's wife looks to commandeer a, a supposedly meritorious approach for the purposes of serving her own agenda. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.